Okay, so today I'll be talking about the decline of arcades. So, um, arcades were very popular in the 1970s to probably about the mid 1990s, and they started to decline from the mid 1990s to the 2000s, basically. So, um, so you see this chart here. You see, it, so it's there's a game, there's the game, there's the year, the revenue. In in that year, basically, and there's the inflation adjusted revenue. So, Pong was the first video game arcade machine that was ever released, and that was released in 1972, and. The revenue was based on the number of arcade cabinets that were sold. So $11 million worth of arcade cabinets were sold for Pong. And the inflation adjusted revenue was $63.4 million in 2019 dollars, basically. And Space Invader was like the next arcade cabinet release, and that was released in 1978. And it, the revenue was $2.702 billion. I got all this information out of Wikipedia. I'll leave the references in the link below. And uh, the inflation adjusted revenue is $10.6 billion. That's quite a lot of money for arcade machine. And it probably generated even more money for the people who bought the arcade cabinets basically so it's like a multi-billion dollar industry starting from the late 1970s right then in the early 1980s you had a very popular arcade game called pac-man i think it was released by by namco and the revenue for that was 3.5 billion in 1980 and inflation adjusted price dollars is 10.9 billion dollars which is quite a lot of money and you had missile command which was released in 1980 36.8 million inflation adjusted 69.1 million and you had battle zone and pole position arabian star wars and star wars return of the jedi roj and these raised millions of dollars, but not, they weren't as successful as games like Pac-Man, Space Invader, or Space Invader. You had Indiana Jones, released in 1985, which raised about $3.2 million in revenue, selling cabinets. Inflation is just a $6.01 million. And... At about 1983, you had the video game crash of 1983, and that kind of explains why the revenues have dropped so sharply from that period on up to probably 1989. It's dropped pretty steeply, so as you can see in the graph on the right, from 1972 to 1980, the revenue was in the billions of dollars for very popular arcade cabinets like Pac-Man, Space Invader, which uh, sold billion, which raised billions of dollars in revenue, and then it dropped steeply around 1980. Um, because you didn't reach the billion dollar mark, you reached, started to reach the millions of dollars, right? And then it started to decline from 80 to, I guess, up to 1989. And from 1990, you see a sharp, like, uh, ascendant from 1990 to uh, up to 1993. So... In 1990, you had a game like 
hard driving. I think that was released by Atari. And $22.9 million were raised in revenue for selling cabinets. Inflation adjusted was 47.2 million. And Street Fighter was a was a pretty popular game. Street Fighter 2. And that was released in 1991. And the revenue for that was $2.312 billion. Inflation adjusted was $4.34 billion. And you kind of like see a spike from 1992. I guess up to 1993. With Street Fighter causing it. Causing this big boom in arcades. Because it was very popular back in. Back when I was going to high school you know. Everybody was playing Street Fighter 2. It was popular because uh, people could play against each other. You know, not against the computer. Playing against a computer was no fun, but playing against other people, I guess that kind of like got people hooked on it, basically. And then you had another very popular fighting game called Mortal Kombat, which raised 570 million in cabinets, arcade cabinet sales. And that's inflation adjusted as 810 million in 2000. $19 and Mortal Kombat 2 didn't do so hot it sold less units than Mortal Kombat 1 at a hundred and hundred million dollars but hundred million dollars is quite a lot of money inflation adjusted 172 million NBA Jam which was a pretty good game so they sold one billion dollars in arcade cabinets raised one that's 1.17 billion in inflation adjusted dollars and you did have arcades up to 1999 like some very good arcade games like Star Wars Trilogy which was which was released around I think 1999 and some other ones like Tekken which was released in I think 1995 or 1996, which was was another popular fighting game. And these fighting games, people still went to arcades to play these fighting games because, you know, they could play against other people, basically. But at the same time, um, arcade cabinets were basically getting better and better and better, you know. Not the arcade cabinets, but the video game consoles and computers were getting better and better. Because as you started to go into the mid-1990s, you started coming out with 32-bit operating systems for computers like uh, Windows 95 and Windows 98, which came out three years later. And basically, video game consoles like the Sony PlayStation 1, the Sega Saturn, and you also had a couple of others like the 3DO, which was also a 32-bit video game console. But that didn't quite make it because it it was too expensive and not a lot of people bought it. But uh, basically... PlayStation and Sega Saturn and then what really um, put the nail in the coffin for arcades was when they came out with like arcade um, like video game consoles like this like the Sega Dreamcast I think that was released around 2000 and you had the PlayStation um, Two, which was released around 2001 in addition to that you had high speed internet basically and that really negated the need to go to the arcade because with high speed broadband internet people could play video games with each other over the internet right instead of going to the arcade and playing it so a lot of arcades 
started to close around the 2000s. And basically, the reason why people went to the arcades from the 1970s to the early 1990s was because of the fact that uh, the arcade cabinets or arcade boards were so much more superior in terms of quality than computer games or video game consoles basically so that's why people went to the arcades and in addition to that you came out they came out with games like Street Fighter and uh, Mortal Kombat and stuff like that which and Tekken and different versions of Street Fighter 2 like Street Fighter 2 Alpha and whatever and people went to the arcades just to play against other people that was another big reason but um, in the next um, part I, I will show you how um, arcade games look like back in the 19 I guess the mid 1980s and compare that with um, video game consoles and stuff like that to show you how it differed in terms of like quality and I, I'm going to show you how there's there was kind of like a progression of, of video game consoles getting and computers getting better and better as you went into the mid 1990s so I'll show you that next basically okay so uh, here you see uh, the game Commando, and you see the arcade version of Commando on the left, and you see the Atari version of Commando on the right, and you can see how, if you compare the two, you can see that the Atari 2600 version looks looks terrible compared to the arcade version. In addition to that, the uh, arcade version sounds much better and I'll, I'll play that after so um yeah so you can see the stark contrast between arcade games and video game console games in the early 1980s and late 1970s and now um you have the arcade version on the left and the commodore 64 version on the right and you can see that the commodore 64 version doesn't look as good as the arcade version of of the same game basically the the C64 port of Commando looks a lot crappier than, than the arcade version and this is how it was back in the I guess the up to the mid 1980s and uh, now you have the arcade version of Commando and on the left and the NES version of Commando on the right and the NES version was the Nintendo Entertainment version was a pretty decent version of Commando but uh, I have to say the arcade version was still much better than the NES version and everything I just compared right now were 8-bit computers and 8-bit uh, video game consoles and, and during the 8-bit era arcade versions were always more superior compared to the home console or the home computer versions 
comparison between the arcade version of uh, 1943 and the NES version of 1943. And you can see that the arcade version looks much better. That's because the arcade version used a 16-bit microprocessor while the NES used the 8-bit microprocessor. So that's why, basically. Okay, now you see a side-to-side -side comparison between the arcade version of POW which is on the left, Prisoners of War, and the arcade version of Prisoners of War for the NES on the right. So the arcade version looks much better, basically. Okay, now when you get to the 16-bit era, um, for this clip right here, you see Area 88, or UN Squadron, for the arcade version, and the SNES version being on the right. And they are pretty close when it comes to graphics and sound. And um, I guess the gap between the arcade games and the home computer and the home video game systems was kind of like closing at this time with 16-bit um, computers and uh, video game consoles. But arcades were still popular even at this time because of the fact that uh, people could play against other players in the arcade and stuff like that. And um, in addition to that, 16-bit games were more expensive than 8-bit games so um, there was incentive to still play games in the arcade basically and the technology wasn't uh, all that all that much better for the home versions you know home version video game or PC so arcade still had a place even in the 16-bit era basically
They're one. Ugh! <laughs> 
Move it! 